Play more meta, play more meta, play more meta. It is 9 in the morning here. I'm sipping a coffee and eating some yogurt. It's bare bones here. Today, I've got a little play more guide update for you guys. I'm going to try to cover everything that has changed with the Claymore and how it should be used in 1.10. First things first, I'd like to give a little refresher on where we get Hyper Armor frames on the main Claymore animations. Most importantly, the R2. You'll see on the screen here that with the R2, we get Hyper Armor on the 3rd frame out of charge or 14th frame out of neutral, on the 9th frame with the two-handed R1, and the 11th frame with the rolling or crouching R1. In most cases, what this means is with the two-handed R1, you should be able to reaction trade with Hyper Armor, reaction trade with the two-handed R2 out of charge, and prediction trade with the rolling R1 and neutral R2. Previously, trying to get a full charge R2 was the best trading opportunity available to the Claymore. But now in 1.10, we are able to simply trade almost anything with both R1 and R2. One of the biggest advantages of this for the Claymore is being able to simply giga chad your way through neutral with the R2. If ever someone tries to attack into your charging state, simply react by releasing R2 to out trade. If they respect it and try to whiff punish knowing the R2 is coming, either free aim up to catch a jump or a way to shut down the whiff punish. In this case, the only real punish window is a perfectly timed jump or reading the away free aim and spacing in aggressively. You probably know by now that two-handed greatsword R1 can mash into nearly anything in the game and steal prior. But what if I told you this is just not the move on the Claymore? With piercing attacks and no true combos, you're far better off outspacing and punishing with either crouch R1 or R2, depending on the whiff punish range and timing, or predicting attacks and trading with the R2. As you saw on the screen earlier, this requires a whole 14 frame read, but the payoff is massive when you do make these reads. You'll see in some of these clips here that I'm heavily relying on R2 with punishes, even with the new poise changes because this weapon just ain't that good and generally speaking, taking too many trades will get you the L. However, once you've secured a decent health lead, trade away. Why not? Moving on, I'd like to talk about what the general game plan is with your Claymore for most of its matchups. If you were paying attention to the frame data I had on the screen at the start, you might have noticed that counter damage frames extend past hyper armor frames. This small section of counter frames with no hyper armor is exactly what you're looking for with the Claymore, as it's where you're going to be with punishing with your CR1. Generally, your flowchart with Claymore is to read an attack early, outspace and either R2 or crouch R1 in those later counter frames, then move in and begin charging R2. If your opponent decides to mash, simply release R2 as soon as possible. If they decide to roll, try to catch with R2 release. And if they sprint out of range, then simply free aim backwards to avoid a punish. If they sprint away and reverse jump back in for a jump punish, it is simply Jover and I don't know what to tell you. I also want to take a little bit of time to talk about the running R1. The Greatsword running R1 is a great whiff punish tool from far away, a decent roll catch, and an all-around good attack to throw out to catch people in neutral, mostly because it has some crazy phantom damage. Although it doesn't have piercing damage, it does get frame 9 hyper armor like the R1 while slightly out damaging it in exchange for slightly longer recoveries. The next thing I want to talk about is the viability of spamming hyper armor and trading. Although this will work somewhat well against almost all setups, It'll leave you at a big disadvantage once you face the Uggs, or the Colossals, or the Great Hammers, whatever it may be. If you were to simply work on your spacing, you're much better off in the long run. Chances are, any good player falling for this is still just getting used to the new patch, and after long, good players simply won't attack into your neutral with anything reactable if you can out-trade. Keeping in mind that any damage taken during Hyper Armor frames is now significantly reduced. With that being said, like I said before, it's never a bad idea to throw out that R1 hyper armor when you have a solid health advantage. Putting up a hyper armor wall for an entire duel, like you might with KGS, simply isn't worth it. 
Now, the last thing I want to talk about today is, with all of this being said, is the Claymore now a viable pick, both over KGS and over some meta setups in general? And the answer is still no. Unless played near perfectly, the Claymore still falls short of both KGS and Health and Steeple for its lack of true combos and damage respectively. It is simply much harder to get wins on Claymore than KGS and has some glaring weaknesses that the KGS doesn't. However, I do think that all great swords have now moved up to a high A tier and can definitely be used in a competitive setting. Just with the right amount of time invested, you will always be leaving yourself at a disadvantage against meta setups such as PSSS, Two Hand Shear, Naga Kivas, and others. If I'd invested as much time into one of those as I did Claymore, I would simply be a much stronger player. Me personally, I don't really care about all that, as I lack the competitive edge that it takes to really try hard this game, but I think Claymore is still a four fun weapon, as it should be. If you made it this far, I just want to say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments, any feedback is much appreciated. I'm still very bad at editing, but I do enjoy learning slowly and making these sorts of videos. If you like some of this more technical stuff, I hopefully will get an updated Hyper Armor and Ash of War Poise Damage calculations guide up within the next few weeks, as the math is very complicated at first glance. But other than that, thanks again for watching and I hope you have a nice rest of your day.